Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo. All right, Mrs. Peel, I'll go. Steve, Steve, uh, what? Oh. Steve? Steve, what is it? Tubby, what? it's Tubby Vincent. Tubby, can you hear me? C- can you tell me who, who did this to you? Steve, it's all in the past. No, uh, no time. Uh. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode 2 of this story, in which Emma Peel escapes death, and John Steed is offered the opportunity to... Escape in Time. Mother had, misguidedly, assigned a rather tricky case to a young agent named Clive Paxton. The case was to investigate the disappearance of several wanted men, men who had embezzled millions from their governments by stealing state secrets. Paxton, through bad luck or bad judgment, had ended up dead, and it was at this point that Mother, in his new headquarters in the Tower of London, had handed over the case to John Steed and Emma Peel. They'd hardly got going on it at all before there was another death. Tubby Vincent fell through the door of Steed's apartment and collapsed in Steed's arms. Steed? Steed, is he dead? Yes, it's Tubby, all right, and he's dead. My wound. We were just talking about him. You said he was on our side. Was is the right word. I have to come here to try and tell us something, but what? Well, go through his pockets. Might as well. Good agent always has a carry-through. Means of passing on certain information that should be cut down like this. Yeah, the usual things. Wallet. Go through it, would you, Mrs. Peel? Right. Well, there's nothing much here. Usual things. Identification, driver's license, seven pounds in notes, member's card to the Esquire Club. Oh, didn't know it was the type. Well, most types like bunny girls. Hmm, cigarette lighter. And cigarette case. Yes, I've seen one of these before. Standard issue. You press the back and... The other side opens. Here we are. List of names. Pierre Gaspar, Bibi Jin, Louis de Madrago. All men who have vanished. All wanted men. And here, Colonel Jocino. Another man on the run. Colonel Jocino of the South American Republic, the ex-dictator. Who, so the press has it, absconded recently with half the treasury. Yet another man on the run. Yet another man seeking refuge here. What else does it say, Steve? Jocena, Makedoki Court, Regent's Park, from the first. Make contact at 12.30 p.m. First, that's tomorrow. Who makes contact? Who can tell? But clearly, we have to watch Makedoki Court at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. Jocena could lead us to the escape route. It could be our first link in the chain. Well, I think that's a date. Don't you, Steve? <laughs> And so, just after noon the next day, John Steed and Emma Peel, in Mrs. Peel's open sports car, waited outside McAdocky Court. That's him. That's just see now. Follow him, Mrs. Peel. Right. They did follow the casino's car. It was a little complicated, but Mrs. Peel had been in the business long enough to know how to do it. It wasn't until some ten minutes later that Steed said... They're not the only ones at this game, Mrs. Peel. You mean that blue saloon that keeps passing and dropping back again? 
stopping and then overtaking? That's right. They think it's being natural. Of course, it isn't. It's far better to just stick behind as we're doing. Jacina's car stopping on the left. There, by the barber shop. Well, you pass him and stop at the next intersection. I'll get out and tell Jacina. You check on that blue saloon. Check. Here we go. Steed got out of the car and Mrs. Peel drove on. In a matter of minutes, the Blue Saloon, having stopped outside the barber's shop, overtook her. Mrs. Peel, with superb presence of mind, didn't even glance at the occupants. But they did at her. There she goes. She's on to us, Mitchell. There, in the open sports. What do we do to get rid of her, eh? <laughs> Why, get rid of her, of course. Take her out into the country, miles away from Tyson's place, and squeeze her off the road. You do know how, don't you? Watch me. Some while, and some miles later, Mrs. Peel found herself doing quite a speed on an open road without any other traffic. The blue saloon lagged behind, and then suddenly caught up. It came alongside and appeared to be racing with her. Mrs. Peel slowed down. The other car slowed down. Mrs. Peel accelerated. The other car did the same. And then... The powerful saloon, matching all of Mrs. Peel's skill, gradually began to edge her open sports car up the road. A bend appeared. The saloon swerved, crowded in, and forced Mrs. Peel to swing the wheel dangerously. She skidded. <laughs> Mrs. Peel, knowing this was all set for disaster, changed down, and the moment before the crash, rolled herself into a ball and shot out of the car. <laughs> In the blue saloon, the woman, Vesta, turned to her companion. That was neat. We got rid of her all right, Mitchell. I told you, I can always deal with women. Lady killer, that's me. Don't be too sure. The advice was sound, for Mrs. Peel, rolling in the ditch, shot upright. Her dignity was more bruised than her body. I'll make you pay for this. My car! You will pay in full, even my parking fines. <laughs> So, you've lost your leads, both of you. And my car. No excuse. They should lock me up here in the tower like Anne Bullen. Oh, that is the right way to say her name, isn't it? Bullen, Bullen. Oh. We're both victims of fate, Mrs. Peel. I didn't do much better. That man, Jacina, went into the barber's and simply never came out. I can give you very little assistance except to repeat that Paxton went after a man called Tyson. Paxton was murdered. Don't forget that. Well, just be careful. Uh, a glass of white wine, Mrs. Peel? Well, I'd prefer mulled ale. More in keeping with this place and the weather. The air does indeed bite shrewdly. Mm. It's very cold. Uh, but the wine will warm you. I need something. Uh, Steve, thank you. The point is, Mother, what do we do now? Well, Mrs. Peel has had her close shave. I should think it's time you went back to the barber's and got yours. Mm. The key word must still be Tyson. And the objective is still to discover the escape route. Yes, I suppose so. Cheers. Your very good health. Well, I suppose it's once more on to the breach, dear friends. Yes, exactly. But do be careful not to close up anything with our English dead. We're losing so many agents these days. We'll do our best. I'll follow the escape route, Mrs. Peel. You'll find me back at home in a nice hot bath. Bye, Mother. Sweets to the sweet. Farewell. <laughs> And so, having dutifully reported to Mother in his tower HQ, Steve dropped Mrs. Peel back at her apartment and drove to the barber's shop. It was empty. From behind a curtain stepped a white-coated, jovial little man. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Oh, just a trim, please. Certainly, sir. Just take a chair. Thank you. I haven't had the pleasure of your patronage before, have we, sir? No, no, I'm just passing through. Recommended to come here by Senor Jocino. Ah, I see. Want to, uh, sort of, uh, get away from it all, do you, sir? Exactly, yes. Uh, any tips? Well, I, uh, I should suggest that when you've had your hair cut, you go out by the back way and down the street to the Eastern Galleries. Very interesting place they've got there, I'm told. Thank you. I might do just that. 
And, of course, Steve did. Having left a substantial tip at the barber's, he walked briskly into the Eastern galleries and found himself being interviewed by a most attractive young woman in Eastern garb. Of course, you will, will need your passport, Mr. Steed. Ah, well, I'm sorry, I haven't got it with me at the moment. Uh, business must be brisk, eh? It is wise not to ask questions. You must obey implicitly. I trust that is clearly understood? Of course, your trust is not misplaced. You have travelled far? Far enough. Good. Then let us say that you are now on the way to the end of your road. But from now on, Ganesha will be with you. Oh, uh, will he? Ganesha is the elephant god. He is the remover of all obstacles. With this help, you can surmount any barriers. Oh, that's nice. Uh, what would you give for an escape from freedom, for complete liberty? Half my worldly possessions. Our terms exactly. Here. Your next link in the chain. Please to come this way. I must ask you, please, to consent to being blindfolded. It is necessary that you should not know where you are taken. Hmm. Very well. Steed submitted to the blindfold treatment and was then led through various passages until the sound of traffic told him that he was in the open air of a courtyard. A voice said, In here, please. Steed felt the smooth leather of the car seat and sat down gently. Relax. This takes quite a long time. May as well enjoy it. John Steed estimated that the journey took 40 minutes. He was then taken from the car and up a series of steps into a house. The blindfold was removed... And a voice said, uh, That will be all manners. Very good, sir. Well, Mr. Steed, so you wish to escape. Uh, but forgive me, what are you escaping from? I don't recall your notorious exploits. I haven't been found out yet, uh, Mr. Uh, Tyson. Waldo Tyson. You have foresight, Mr. Steed. Oh, I have far more than that. I have diamonds. You can arrange my escape from a very awkward situation. Permanently. Oh, yes. You see, I can send you back in time to any century you wish, any era you decide upon. Would you care for a small demonstration, Mr. Steed? If so, then please step this way. But I'd watch that step if I were you, Steed. Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omen. <laughs>